Today we're going to talk about building with paper. There's all different ways you can use paper in sculpture. And so I want to kind of highlight those today so you know what your options are moving forward. The first one is quilling. Quilling uses long strips of skinny paper and you manipulate the paper by curling it in various ways. As you can see in this uh, photograph right here of this piece of artwork, the paper actually sits on its side on top of other paper, but the curls are really what create like the body or the um, solid look to the piece. It's a lot of use of lines and shapes for this type of um, sculpture. It's usually used with relief sculpture. So what that means is that it's a flat back and then the sculpture actually comes out of the wall if it was put onto a wall. It's not in the round. You can't alt walk all the way around it. You only can see really three sides of the sculpture. It uses patterns to create shapes. So here we have some examples of tools that you can use for the quilling. I do have a few of these tools. You can see how you can actually curl. You start with a curled piece of paper and you kind of go from there. If you Look here, I have some other examples of pieces, ways that you can use this curling. It's also called paper filigree, but they all start with a curl. You have the tight circle, which you, you know, you curl it around your stick and then you glue it. So you use glue to kind of um, make your pieces more permanent. If you look down here at the marquee, get my mouse to work, the marquee, it's a curled piece, but then you've pinch the ends to make this kind of football shape. A teardrop is the same idea, but you're just pinching one end. And you can kind of get the idea of what all these different things are just by looking at this diagram. Here are some others that you can look at. And this, you can always look back at this slideshow and this movie to see when you're actually creating. But really any shape that you can dream up, you can create with paper quilling. It's just a matter of creating the curl and then kind of pinching and folding from there to get what you want. We're gonna watch this progression here of a paper filigree, filigree, sorry. So you can see here the lines that are created with the hair that comes down. You can use the paper simply to create those lines, but also to create the solid blocks of color. It is time consuming, but very interesting when you're finished. So the next one is folded paper, also known as origami. Many of you probably have done this in the past. Um, it's great for children. My kids love to do origami but also it can be really interesting and also really dynamic. And you can actually put pieces of origami together to form different sculptures and use it in different ways. I also wanna just kind of interject here and mention that you can use more than one of these at a time. So you could combine, combine the idea of quilling with origami if you chose to. It originated from Japan and it involves almost no cutting. Now, sometimes there is cutting with origami and for your sculptures, you can do whatever you want. But a lot of origami artists pride themselves in creating their pieces 
without actually using any cutting. Oh, I'm gonna go back here for just a second. Also, it usually begins with just a square piece of paper. Most times, one piece of paper. Sometimes it's paper that is combined together. And um, with a combination of similar folds. A lot of origami pieces all start with the same set of directions a lot of times. Origami directions are very easy to find on the internet. So if you wanted to try origami, that's what I would encourage you to do, to do your research and to figure out what you want to create and how you would create it. I have lots of origami paper here for you to use, and um, you can also use other types of paper. And like I said, you can combine origami with another form. So now we're going to watch this short little clip on... Origami. Oh, it went back. So there you can see the eagle and how it was created using all those different folds. The next one is cut paper. It's also referred to as Schnernschnitz. It began in Switzerland and Germany, and it's really about cutting these very fine, delicate details out of paper. Um, you can use X-Acto knives for this. There are these things called Schnernschnitz scissors, which I don't have in here, but you can buy. And they are just like tiny little scissors that have a straight, very sharp tip to them. It can get really, really complicated and detailed. In fact, sometimes the more detailed, the more beautiful it is. It does end up looking very two-dimensional, but because it involves cut paper, I consider it three-dimensional art. You can use words and things like that. These are a few that I've done myself. Also, cut paper can be used in a variety of ways. So you can kind of think outside the box as well. Here I have some unique ideas for sculpting with paper. You know, you can commit, create almost a diorama. This one's in a toilet paper tube. Um, here's one where they incorporated other media. So they had cut paper. So it's a pretty simple cut paper design, but they incorporated a paint can and a paintbrush to make it look like spilled paint. Using books is another, another great way you can do it. This one actually has a box. So it is a diorama with a book inside of it, and the book pages are cut. If you've ever looked at book art, there are a lot of really, really interesting sculptures made out of books. And I've got lots of old books that you can cut up and use. Layering cut paper. Um, again, this gives you kind of the diorama feel of the depth going off into space. Some more examples of quilling. Quilling doesn't necessarily have to form like realistic images. You can use it to create beautiful designs and um, patterns and things like that. Here's some more book art that you can see. Here is a combination of origami with book art. You can see the pages are cut out in the center, things like that. So you can combine multiple methods to do if you want to go with sculpture and paper.
I think it's a great idea. And if you do want to go this route, we can definitely talk more about that. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.